Hey guys, Dr. Thomas. Um, so when we start chapter eight, there's a bunch of reading stuff about like different types of bonding and bond energies and all that kind of stuff. But really what I want to help you with right now is learning how to draw Lewis dot structures. Um, so when we draw Lewis dot structures, we're drawing the atoms involved in molecules and compounds with their valence electrons. Basically, it's going to tell us when, when we form bonds, it can be a single bond or a double bond or a triple bond. So let's work our way up with that. But initially, whenever we write an atom down, we're going to show the valence electrons as dots. Okay. So if I have a sodium atom, its configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. The third shell is a valence shell. It only has one electron in that shell. So I'm going to put, beside the symbol for Na, I'm going to put one dot. Doesn't really matter where you put it. It could be above, below, left, or right, but you just got to pick a spot. Okay? If I have carbon, carbon uh, has 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So in the second shell, there are four electrons. That's the 2s and the 2p for the four electrons. So when I put four dots, I'm going to space them out. One, two, three, four. So then if I go to nitrogen, I put the symbol N. It has five valence electrons. And the shortcut, if we look at the periodic table, the first two groups, the alkali metals, alkali and earth metals, those are groups one and two. We usually jump over the transition metals and get over to the, the P block on the right side of the table. Aluminum has group three, carbon is group four, uh, nitrogen is group five, oxygen is group six, and the halogen is group seven, and the noble gases are group eight. Whatever group you're in, that's how many dots you put. Okay, so nitrogen is in group five, it gets five dots. So when I do five dots, again, I do the four dots separately the four is the most you can have apart from each other and then the fifth one is going to have to pair up so it doesn't matter where I do it but somewhere around the nitrogen I now need to make a pair okay so when I'm drawing an atom by itself I just put the dots around it for the number that it has so if I have a chlorine atom last one then I'll do these it's in group seven the halogens are group seven it should have seven dots. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it should look like that. Okay? Now, we start making compounds. That means there's more than one element that are bonding to each other. So let's just say I have the Cl2 molecule. That means two chlorines are going to bond with each other. So I'm going to have two chlorines. Each chlorine has seven dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We learned a long time ago in chapter six that any orbital can only hold two electrons. So when I pair these, elect these electrons up, basically what I'm saying, and these are not accurately distributed, but there's an orbital holding those two electrons. There's an orbital holding those two electrons. There's an orbital holding those two electrons. Those orbitals are all full. They can't do anything else. They can't share electrons with other atoms or anything like that. Those are full orbitals. They're occupied. But this orbital only has one electron in it. The other chlorine, same idea. So there's an orbital there with one electron. This is a full orbital. That's a full orbital. That's a full orbital. But this guy also has one with one electron. So right now, both of these chlorine atoms are unsatisfied. They both have seven electrons in the valence shell, and they both want to get up to eight. They want to be like argon. Okay? Well, they have two ways of doing that. If they could go find another atom and steal an electron from it, that would put another electron in that orbital. That would give it a minus one charge and it'd be a Cl minus, that would make him happy. But that's not always an option. It, there's not always another ele electron available for it to steal. So the other option is we can share. So what can happen is if these two chlorine atoms move closer together, 
without erasing everything, this orbital extends over this orbital where they overlap with each other. Now those two electrons can move freely back and forth between the atoms. So now this chlorine gets to claim his own electron plus the one over there. So he has seven and he's sharing an eighth electron with that guy. And then if I look at this guy, he's got seven electrons, but he gets to count that one toward his octet also. So each atom is trying to get what we call an octet, trying to get eight electrons by having, using the ones he has, but also by sharing with another. Every time two atoms share two electrons, it's usually one electron from each atom in an overlapping orbital. But this guy gets to count both of them as his own. This guy gets to count both of them as his own. So by sharing, it's kind of like both chlorines gain an electron. Even though there aren't any electron, extra electrons around, but they're sharing it so it makes it feel like there are more. Okay? Now, normally how we would draw that without all the orbitals and all that, I would draw my two chlorines. I'd put my seven dots. So there's my seven dots. And what I'm going to do is the electrons that are going to be sharing in orbitals, I'm just going to connect them with a line. When I connect two electrons with a line, that implies they're being shared between the atoms. That's a single covalent bond. A covalent bond is a bond of shared electrons. Okay, So that is a much cleaner way to draw this. This is more representative of what's really going on, but we're not always going to draw all that. If I ask you to draw the Cl2 molecule, that's what I'm expecting you to draw. Okay. Now, what if it was O2? I'm going to draw the O2 molecule. Well, now, there's two oxygens. Each oxygen is going to get six dots. Now, I want to be strategic here. I know that this guy has six dots. I know he wants to get up to eight for it to have an octet like neon. So basically he's gonna have to share the two electrons that are by themselves. Those are the ones that are gonna get shared with the other oxygen. And I know I'm gonna connect them with dots. So I'm gonna leave these two by themselves. I'm gonna pair those up. And that way, when they start sharing, we're gonna share those in an orbital and we're gonna share those in an orbital. So that's what it kind of looks like. But again, I could draw that cleaner. If I kind of knew ahead of time with six dots, I'm going to need to make two bonds. I could have drawn the bonds in the first place and then put the lone pairs like that. This just looks better than that does. Okay. So this is what my Lewis dot structure for the oxygen molecule is. Now I used the term a second ago, the electrons that are over here paired up, but they're not part of the bonding. We call them either non-bonding electron pairs or lone pairs. I mean, they're lone pairs because they're kind of out there by themselves. Again, there's an orbital out here where those electrons are flying around, but they're not being shared. So that's a lone pair. All right. So, now let's keep going. What if I had a water molecule, H2O? What's going to happen here? Well, I can kind of plan out over here. Oxygen's going to have six dots. Hydrogen's going to have one dot, but there are two of them. So I had to put these together to make a molecule. So I look at it and say, okay, well, my oxygen, put my six dots. Where are the hydrogens going to go? Well, I want to put them close to the single dots. So I'm going to put one hydrogen right here and one hydrogen right here. And when I connect them, 
It's giving me a single bond between the oxygen and this hydrogen, a single bond between the oxygen and this hydrogen. That's going to be my water molecule. So that's how it goes. Now what about if I had carbon dioxide, CO2? As you do these, you want to get better and better at anticipating what's going to happen. So with carbon, I should know it's in group four, so I'm going to put four dots around it. I know it wants to get to eight. Now in the previous one I just did, hydrogen only wanted to get to two, but it's the only one that does that. It wants to be like helium. All the other nonmetals want to be like noble gases that have eight electrons in the valence shell. So carbon has four dots and wants to get up to eight, so it's going to have to make four bonds. Oxygen is going to have six dots. If it has six dots, that means it needs to make two bonds because six plus two makes eight. Four bonds plus four dots makes eight. Six dots plus two bonds makes eight. You're always trying to get to eight. So I know carbon is going to need four bonds. I know oxygen is going to need two bonds. Somehow I have to make that work. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my oxygens on either side. And at this point, I'm not worried about the shape of the molecule. I just want to get the right bonds. When we get to chapter nine, that's when we start worrying about the shapes and where everything goes. But for now, carbon has to have four bonds. Well, if he makes two bonds to this oxygen and two bonds to that oxygen, that gets carbon the four bonds that he needs and both oxygens got the two bonds that they want. So everybody got the bonds they want, but now I need to put in, make sure all the electrons are present that I'm looking for, okay? Carbon is supposed to have four dots. Well, I already used them. When I connected bonds, there's a dot here and a dot here. So every time I drew a line, there's a dot and a dot that's represented there. So for carbon, one, two, three, four, all four dots of carbon are already shown. I don't need to put any more dots down for carbon. If you want, you can put a dot here and a dot here and a dot here, but make sure it's part of the line because we're supposed to be connecting the dots, okay? Now for oxygen, each oxygen is supposed to have six dots. Well, I've already got one, two, but then I need four more. Three, four, five, six. Now, I don't care where you put the pairs, but it is important that the four you put here, it has to be two pairs. Don't put any of them by themselves. Because if I remember, oxygen is six dots. The ones I connected are the lone ones. So these two are right here. And then the paired ones, those are the extra ones. Doesn't matter where they go as long as they're around the oxygen. Same thing on this side. He's supposed to have six dots. The ones by themselves are the ones that got connected. So I need to have two more pairs. So that's the Lewis dot structure of CO2. Carbon, all four dots are used in bonds. For oxygen, I use two of them in bonds. So there's four left over but I, you gotta keep track of your electrons and make sure that all the electrons that are supposed to be represented for CO2, they're all represented in the drawing. You can't leave any valence electrons out. So now let's keep going. So our next one, one more, we'll do H, C, N hydrocyanic acid. So when I look at a molecule, I always have to decide if there's several elements involved, I have to decide what's going to go in the middle. The thing that goes in the middle, and you can't just look at the order here and say all oh, carbon's in the middle, so that means I'm going to put it in the middle of the molecule. That will not always be true. You have to look and say, okay, which one needs the most bonds? Of these three, hydrogen, 
only needs one mon to like he, be like helium. Carbon needs four mons to be like neon. Nitrogen needs three mons to be like neon. So I know that ahead of time. The one that needs the most mons is carbon. So I put it there. I put the hydrogen and nitrogen around it. And I don't know yet if they're going to be lined up or off at some weird angle. But again, that's chapter nine. But for now, I'm just going to put a hydrogen on one side, a nitrogen on the other side. I know that carbon has to have four bonds. Well, he can only make one bond with hydrogen. But that means he can make the other three bonds with nitrogen. That satisfies the bonding for everybody. I knew before hydrogen only wanted one, nitrogen wanted three, carbon wanted four. So this pattern makes everybody happy. But I need to think, okay, how many more dots do I need to show? Hydrogen is only supposed to have one dot. It's right there. In that bond, there's already a dot there. Carbon is supposed to have four dots. One, two, three, four, they're all already accounted for. But then nitrogen is supposed to have five dots. Remember, that's by the group number. Nitrogen's in group five. So it's got one, two, three. So that means I need to give it two more electrons and they are gonna be paired up, four, five. It doesn't really matter where you put them as long as they're paired, keep them together. So that's the Lewis dot structure for HCN.